morning and welcome back to the lecture series on performative gender and religions in South Asia. Today we are going to conclude uh, our module on tribal traditions and performances. So, this is going to be our last lecture from this module. Uh, we will just hearken back uh, and summarize some of the points that we have discussed in our previous lectures in this module. So, the collective public worship is something that we have uh, tried to understand through uh, uh, the mentioning of a number of different festivals that the Santhals uh, observe and celebrate throughout the year. So, the festivals of the tribe uh, primarily are meant to provide a sense of fellow feeling with the uh, demigods, with the bongas or spirits. And this can be seen through the invocation, through their prayers and the offerings that are made to the spirits. As the whole village is involved in these festivities or these uh, festival uh, rituals, it uh, symbolizes, the rituals symbolize the tribal people's alliance and the tribal people's uh, identity uh, emerging as a collective, as a a group of people as a community. So, the concept of uh, individual being is uh, not present among the tribals. Jethroasi uh, states and I quote, the sacred places namely the Jaharthan, uh, the, the Manjithan and the Bhitar where these rituals are celebrated as well as the sheds erected during the Baha festival the position by Maranguru, Jahaira and Morekuturuiko uh, as well as the sacred altar indicate a sense of special presence of the spirits and their intervention, their intervention in the everyday life, in the mundane activities of the Santal people. So, community solidarity is manifested through feasting, dancing, singing, merrymaking, you know, drinking, mutual visits to each other's houses and a gift, exchange of gifts. So, the whole village comes together for the celebration. The joy experienced by people is not only on an individual level uh, and in fact, it is not uh, at all on the individual level, but rather at the level of the community, right, as a collective people they enjoy. So, collective public worship gives people a mutual stimulation. In the words of Troasi, it also enhances meanings of the Santhal's complex and varied lives. They become conscious of their unity and at the same time uh, dependence on their spirits. So, this interdependence relationship, humans dependence on nature, humans dependence on uh, deities human's dependence on the ancestor spirits, all of these dependences uh, uh, form uh, a lattice, a network that defines the Santhal's existence. These festivals without their uh, religious uh, element would lose their, uh, their core uh, significance and character. So, the rituals that are part of uh, the different festivals of the Santhal uh, are uh, techniques for entering into continuing and uh, reasserting social relationships with the invisible world. So, these are what Thruasi calls as social religions, religions that are very much intrinsic to and that are very much rooted to the, uh, the social needs, the, uh, the, the social considerations. The rituals are the expression of the community's identity and are also symbolic of the uh, peace uh, or, or the treaty that they have with nature. The tribal communities uh, never uh, try to infringe or transgress the natural law. Whatever they uh, uh, do is within the ambit of natural law. So, Baha festival symbolizes new life or the blossoming of uh, nature, blossoming of flowers. It is called a flower festival and it is celebrated during the spring season, right. 
Sohrai and Janthar festivals are symbolic of new life and abundance. So, the newness emanating from these festivities also extends to the surroundings uh, such as uh, one can find uh, through activities like whitewashing of houses and donning of new clothes. So, I already mentioned about this when I described Baha uh, during the Baha festival, the tribes also renovate their houses, they whitewash their houses uh, and they repair whatever damages uh, are uh, present in their construction and they also have to uh, change the utensils, uh, they, they buy new sets of utensils and they have to don uh, new clothes. So, just like the trees have uh, fresh uh, leaves growing, the humans also follow the natural order in the case of the Santal community. Further, we see that storytelling, we were talking about uh, so many of these uh, festivals where storytelling is at the heart of the festival after uh, you know merry making after the feast the elders start telling stories storytelling is an act of binding the community together so during occasions such as kako chatiyar one of the older men from the village recites the santali account of creation how the santali people originated basically and also the stories of the wanderings of the santal ancestors and the history of their settlement in the current village. So, this is a way of connecting the youth uh, with the provenance, with the origin, with the uh, you know uh, the, the story, the mytho historical story associated with each village. So, the youth are not kind of uh, dissociated from their, uh, their, their roots uh, from their identity, uh, which is a phenomena observable especially as the younger generation uh, has uh, a tendency to uh, you know resettle in the urban areas. So, knowing the history of each village becomes very, very important and here storytelling, the storytelling culture where the elders tell the story, the younger population listen becomes uh, a very important activity. It is an activity associated with survival or, or, or sustenance of the identity of the Santal. Similarly, during the Bhandan ceremony, Bhandan ceremony associated with death, death ritual, right? Uh, we see the Manji and the Jog Manji of the village, the headmen, right, of the village reciting the traditional Santal myth of origin, uh, which is known as the Karambinthi. So, they recite the Karambinthi. Social solidarity is reflected through mundane acts of chanting and singing popular communal songs which invoke uh, weather conditions such as rain and sun. Now, moving on to the Gon tribe, we see that uh, among the Gons, Buddhadeva or Bharadeva is represented by a stone and is believed to live in the Saja tree. Right, such a tree among the uh, Gons is considered as a sacred tree. The worship of Buddha Dev takes place once in three years and begins with uh, songs and recitations. So, one of the songs from Raipur, uh, in a nutshell, when translated, goes like this Of what is the staff made? The staff is made of bamboo. This is the staff of God the staff of mother, the cloth flag of the Desai mother, the mother of the village, right. So, there is also celebration just like among the Santals, we see that the Gons are also celebrating uh, the figure of the mother preserver, someone that is very similar to the figure of uh, Jeher Eda or Jeher Buri, the benevolent mother, mother earth, right, uh, Dharti Mai. It has different names among the different tribals. Uh, coming from different regions of India, but the basic idea is a preservation of uh, soil, of land and of forests. Here we have a video showing the Gon tribe's traditional dance. We can see that the men are wearing their traditional clothing in the lower part of the body, they are garlanded, they have some elaborate headgear 
and uh, they are playing their traditional instrument the drums. So, during the worship of Buddha Dev, invitation is given to all the gods through the Raipur song that has been mentioned. Uh, men take yellow and black flags, beat the drum and uh, men and women alike uh, they dance together and sing. So, through the song that I just mentioned, invitation is given to all the gods, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in Raipur in the locality, men take yellow and black flags and they beat the drum and uh, men and women uh, dance and sing together. The eldest uh, member of the family make uh, various emblems of gods. The women are supposed to clean the house uh, with cow dung and leave when the deities are being worshipped. Once again, just like in the case of Santals, we see that women are abstained, women are prevented from participating in the core rituals. They have to leave home when the uh, worship takes place. A similar role, like I said, is played by the women in the Santal tribe where they are part of preparations of the ritual, but they cannot become uh, a part or cannot participate in the main or the core worship. Further, when sacrifices of animals are made, women are allowed to partake in the sacrificial food only after the men have eaten. So, women can eat only after the men uh, finish their, uh, their feasting. So, th this has certain gendered, uh, you know, gradations uh, observable among different tribal communities such as the Santal and the Gon tribes. When the feast of Buddha Dev is celebrated, no one in the village uh, can refuse the invitation. Once again, it is a communal celebration and everyone has to take part. No distinction of caste and creed is observed during this festival and the sacrificial food is distributed to one and all. Following the feasting, men and women sing uh, songs that uh, refer to that allude to sexual or erotic excess. So, these are licentious songs and uh, and, and uh, the, the celebrations or the merry making go in very uh, similar fashion as the Santhal's uh, Sohrai festival, right. During Sohrai, we talked how people uh, can indulge in certain uh, licentious activities, certain uh, ribaldry and excesses uh, only uh, as long as the festival is going on. However, in the case of the Gon tribe, we observe that the merry making does not form a compulsory part of the ritual. Next, we uh, look at uh, a tribe uh, such as the Uralis uh, who are uh, agricultural workers who were mainly residents of the Cardamom Hills uh, in Kerala. So, Urali is a tribe from the, uh, from the Kerala region, from the southern part of India. Like most of the tribes in southern India, the Urali worship nature as God and uh, they, they believe that uh, the, the nature is uh, responsible for creating the world in which we live. So, nature is uh, deified among the Uralis. They consider the sun as the creator of all souls and the moon as the mother of all creations. So, worshipping the sun comprises an important aspect for the Urali tribe. And music, just like in the case of other uh, tribal communities, music forms an intrinsic part of the Urali tribe's culture and drums and flutes uh, comprise the main musical instruments. The Uralis perform traditional Urali dances, uh, you know, matching the rhythm of the music. They have very coordinated uh, dance movements and the tribe, the entire tribe dances in a group. Worshipping the sun is something uh, also seen among the Hindus, right? And this is something I was mentioning in my previous lecture, where, uh, you know, uh, scholars would see that these kinds of similarities between the Hindus or the Hindu religion and the tribal uh, communities uh, could have, you know, uh, different significances. It could mean that uh, historically they have uh, drawn on each other's cultures, they have exchanged 
traditions or uh, conversely it could also mean that these practices existed independently in each of the religions in each of the traditions they did not draw or they did not uh, uh, you know um, adopt from one another both the hindus and the tribals uh, would simultaneously um, uh, worship the nature worship uh, the the different uh, inanimate uh, objects of the nature right so it can be observed that india has numerous tribes where on the one hand there are a number of differences between their languages in terms of their rituals belief systems and uh, you know their their way of life uh, their myths and yet uh, several similarities can also be observed among these tribal groups the position of women is an important element that uh, comes to visibility uh, while trying to understand the tribal rituals and festivities they are very gendered uh, in in terms of their significance and we see a constant uh, and a conspicuous absence of the woman from the uh, tribal rituals uh, in all these different groups uh, belonging to different uh, belonging to different uh, regions of india so we see the absence of women uh, from the core ritual uh, in the case of most of the tribes belonging to the different regions of india the harmony with nature and the feeling of unity community centric existence is also something uh, that is common among the different tribals and uh, this is uh, expressed through the performances the performances and the festivities uh, actually uh, bring out this collective uh, you know existence of the tribal people further we also see that different tribes have different songs and dance forms which give a diversity uh, of a performance or through these songs and dances the community's uh, culture the community's emotions are captured right with this i am going to stop my lecture here today and with this we also come to the end of this module let's meet again with a new module and another set of discussions thank you